I am the proud owner of this big collection of my grandma's vintage sewing patterns and today I really want to make one. I have sorted through this whole box and I have to say that this Simplicity 1085 pattern is one of my favorites in the whole collection. And today I really want to make this cute puff sleeve blouse. Now, in full disclosure, I made this a few days ago and unfortunately I stained it in the process of making it. I accidentally set in my erasable fabric marker as I was making it. I think my hypothesis is that I used my iron over that ink way too much and then I put it in the wash in the hopes that I could get that ink out and I just set the ink in and there are all of these little black dots and lines all over it wherever I put pleats and darts and that sort of thing. It's very sad. I'm recovering from it. It's okay. It was secondhand material and it didn't take too long. And I might dye it, but regardless, I really want this piece to be sweet and perfect and I'm just gonna make it again. I'm gonna bring you along for the journey. So I think it's kind of fine and good. And now we can do it together. But before I start making this extremely cute little blouse, I am very excited and honored to tell you that today's video is sponsored by one of my favorite sponsors, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning platform full of carefully curated classes led by industry professionals and creative pros designed with your learning goals in mind. Maybe in 2024 you want to learn a new skill or launch that creative side hustle you've been dreaming of, or maybe you just want to hone in and get better at your area of expertise, but you just don't know where to begin. With a huge variety of inspiring and high quality classes, Skillshare is the perfect place to start learning. Skillshare is especially cool because they have learning paths, which are curated sequential class collections that help you master a specific skill or competency. Having these learning paths curated for you is awesome because it just holds you accountable to keep on learning and take step after step in your journey. And it also takes away some of that mental load of having to pick and choose which classes you want to take. For me, it's still really early days running my small business, making ethical and bespoke clothing. And I feel like I run into a lot of imposter syndrome and creative block and just kind of negative doubtful feelings about my business. So when I found the learning path on Skillshare called Beat Art Block and Rebuild Your Creative Confidence, I knew it would be a really great fit for me and I've been really enjoying taking this learning path. Jenna Blackburn says in her class about developing your signature style that today's bad art might be tomorrow's good art. And I was really encouraged by this quote and her advice to try different styles without judgment, keep showing up to your practice and also remembering that there is value in making bad art. The other classes in this collection about creative mindfulness and winning back your creative confidence also gave me some helpful tools and challenges that I will implement in my creative practice in the future to help me stay creative and confident. Skillshare is truly my favorite place to go to when I need to learn and upskill, and that's why I'm really excited that Skillshare have a great deal for you. The first 500 people to click the link in my bio will receive one month free of Skillshare, so get on that. Click the link and get started on a learning pathway that inspires you. Thank you again Skillshare for sponsoring this video and let's get into making this super cute vintage blouse. Here is my cotton bed sheet. It's kind of cream, not white, which for some reason is making me sad. I kind of wanted it to be white, but sometimes you just got to take what the upshot provides. And yeah, I'm just about to cut out my pattern pieces and I will show you what they all look like so that if you want to try and copy them, you might be able to. This pattern has five pieces, A, B, C, D, and E. There's a blouse front, a blouse back, collar, sleeve, and sleeve cuff. It's pretty simple. The blouse front is a very simple bodice block. It has a high neck where the collar is going to go. It has a fitted armhole, a bust dart, a slight angle here that kind of gives you that flattering hip line shape. And it also has two dark tucks at the front. The blouse back is almost identical to the blouse front. It has a slightly less curved armhole as most blouse backs do. It has some little darts right here in the center of the shoulder seam. Then it also has about two inches of extra seam allowance and that's going to be where we fold the seam back 
so that we can put buttons in. Just like the blouse front, it's got this little curve here at the waist and it's also got these sweet little dart tucks on either side of the blouse back. There's four of these collar pieces and the front needs to match the center front and the back needs to match the center back. So you could self-draft this just based off your bodice blocks. This is the blouse sleeve band, but honestly, I'm just going to cut out a big rectangle and then measure it to my arm circumference at a later time. You need two of these. And finally, this is the blouse sleeve. It's about 25 and a half inches wide, roughly. At the top of the arm, it's about 23 inches wide. And at the bottom of the arm, it's at least 30 inches wide. And of course, it has this slight curve with a little bit more oomph in the back of the sleeve than the front. And from the top of the shoulder seam to the bottom of the arm cuff, it's about 17 inches. And you'll need two sleeves. Also, I'm sorry if that was a little bit boring. I just personally find it really interesting to see the shapes of pattern pieces. And sometimes it can just help unlock something. If you're self-drafting something similar and you see a shape or a measurement, it might just make it make sense. I don't know. I just thought I'd give you the information in case you wanted it. Anyway, now that everything's cut out, it's time to start making the blouse. Because I'm making this for the second time, I'm just going to construct it in an order that seems fun to me. And that order is collar first. And I'm also going to do sleeves second. To get started, I ironed all of my pattern pieces just so they were ready to go. And then I reread my instructions just to make sure I knew the plan of attack. I started with the collar and I sewed it right sides together along the long curvy edge and snipped that seam allowance down so that it would reduce bulk. I flipped it right sides out, gave it a good press, and then I sewed both collar pieces together in the center front. Then I got to doing the armband. So I just measured that it was comfortable around my arm and then I liked the shape of it. And then I sewed that together right sides together at five eighths of an inch which was kind of a weird seam allowance to work with so I just put this piece of tape down so that I knew I was getting it accurate. I pressed that seam out so it was nice and flat and then I pressed my armband in half so the right side was facing out. Then I got to prepping my sleeve so I just sewed that right sides together at the side seam, overlocked that edge and pressed it and of course did my gathering stitches along the bottom and the top edges. I'm just going to gather the bottom portion of the sleeve so that it fits the cuff and attach the cuff to the sleeve and I think I will put the gathering stitches in the top part as well. Mainly because I'm procrastinating doing the bodice piece just because this pattern isn't in my size so I'll have to do some refitting and yeah I just wanted to do the easiest tasks first. While I'm here, I'd love to ask you if you wouldn't mind sharing something that you learned about your craft in 2023. If there's something that kind of like changed the game for you, or just a little life hack, sewing, crochet, knitting, whatever it may be, I would love to hear about it. It's not really a hack, but something that I appreciated learning in 2023 was how valuable hand sewing can be in some scenarios. Sometimes you just need a delicate basting stitch or just the precision of hand stitching. I sewed these straps on hand stitched just because it was so, so fiddly to do with machine. And yeah, I never would have in the past because it just takes so much more time, but I value it a lot now because it makes the end result better sometimes. Anyway, it's time to put the cuffs onto the end of my puff sleeves. With the bottom of the sleeve gathered to the circumference of my arm band cuff situation, I just pinned them together, right sides together, and I stitched in between the two gathering lines to secure them together. I overlocked this edge and then I threaded in with a needle the excess overlocking thread, which is my new favorite thing to do. It looks so clean and tidy and I quite enjoy it. Oh, and I removed my basting stitches. Okay, my sleeves are more or less done. I just have to make the bodice now so that I can attach them. To do this bodice, I first have to mark where all of the darts and tucks and pleats are going and put them in. And I think at that stage, I'll do a little fit test to see how it's all looking. 
Darts have always been a mystery to me in my sewing journey, but I feel like I'm finally starting to get a little bit of confidence with them. I think marking them out very clearly is helpful to me so that when I'm sewing, I can make sure that I am sewing exactly where I need to be. And I like having the center line down there as well so I can just make sure that center line is right on the fold of the dart or the tuck or whatever I'm sewing. I feel like the more I do, the more confident I get and that's very reassuring. So I also just tucked one centimeter of seam allowance down on the back facing so that it would be a clean edge once everything was all done. Also, I just have to say this. Yesterday I bought the Air Erasing Sew Line pen to replace my Charco Ace pen. <laughs> this one's like a felt tip and this one's like a ballpoint pen. And the difference in precision is astounding. The biro is so crisp and clean and a tiny little line and the felt tip is such a fat line and having this crisp line for things like darts, so good, so good. I just put the darts in the bottom section of my front piece and I've already done the darts in the back piece and I think I'm going to attach the back to the front piece at the shoulder seam so that I can kind of try it on and then I'm going to mark where I want my bust darts to go because uh, yeah, the ones on the pattern don't really fit me very well. And go plan just to have you here. Mama mine. Well, I don't think that the bust dart needs to go like all the way to the center of the chest. I think it can sit on the side of the chest. I think if it goes all the way in, that's kind of weird. I think it's so classic when you make your own clothes just how nitpicky you can get. Like for me, I'm just looking at these darts and I'm just going, oh, I think they're just like slightly too long and you know, like half a centimeter too high. And I'm trying to think about whether I should make them again. But really, if I were to buy this off a rack, I wouldn't even think twice. I wouldn't even think twice. I'd probably be like, oh well, it looks nice and I like it. I actually think I'm going to do the darts differently. Okay, real talk. I just made a bunch of mistakes. I unpicked, I sewed, I unpicked, I sewed, and then I realized there was a stain on the front of my shirt from the secondhand material. And I just decided, you know what? Start again. So I got out the front again and I re-sewed it all. And now we're good. The notches actually come in kind of clutch when you're doing stuff like this. Like I literally just aligned the notches on the collar to the notches on my shirt. CLUTCH! I just learned this, but basically with a facing, basically with the facing you kind of overlap your collar like this and you'll sew down this top line here and then when you flip it out, right sides out, it looks all nice and neat. That's a little trick of the trade! <laughs> Apparently. Now I'm basically gonna finish this top neckline with bias tape and flip out the facings. Then before you sew your bias tape down to secure the collar, you flip your facing right sides out. I'll just get it nice and pointy. And then from what I believe, you start attaching your bias tape just outside of that facing area there. And it looks really neat and nice. Can you see how neat it looks at the end of the collar? Collar facing. Looks good. After finishing my collar, I hemmed the shirt with a very small hem and then I put the sleeves in right sides together into the bodice, pinned them, made sure the gathers were all even and I just sewed all the way around between my gathering stitches and overlocked that edge. Do you want to know something? I also messed up the sleeves. I'm just having one of those days where you're just making mistake after mistake, but it's okay because I'm up to adding buttons. I think I'm going to use these little floral buttons that I got from Lifeline, just like I did for my first shirt. And yeah, there's not really much to say about buttonhole making. It just takes a lot of time, but we must do it. 
When I'm doing buttons and buttonholes, I try and put my meticulous sewing hat on and I measure everything out very clearly. I do quite a few practice buttonholes, rip them open, make sure the button fits through, and then I confidently go about my way and I do not hesitate because I think the machine can smell fear. Also, I really like to use a needle and just hand stitch my excess threads. I put them through to the back of where the button is and I double knot them. I don't know why I do this. I feel like I learned it off a of TikTok and I just feel like it makes the buttonhole secure, but it might be unnecessary. I like it though. Then I use the gap of the buttonhole to mark the center of where I want the button to go. So basically you know it's gonna line up really well. I double up my thread and I also like to circle around the button a few times just to finish off that stitch. I feel like it makes it very secure and I haven't had any troubles with buttons that I've sewn using that technique. Also, please don't judge my button sewing posture. Ah, yay. Hey, it's done, it's done, it's done. <laughs> I do still need to give it a good wash just to get all of the marks off. I haven't ironed any of the pleats or darts yet just because of the ink being there. So I guess it's like one step away from being done and finished. But I'll try it on for you now and I'll put it in the wash and then I'll give you a proper little montage at the end. There we go! Kind of good! Little buttons on the back. I think I like it on its own, like it's a cute little piece maybe with a skirt or something like that. But mainly what I love about this shirt so much is that it's very easy to layer, like put a dress on top of it, a little overall situation, even like a little vest. Love it. Okay, cool. I'm so glad it worked out. That was a little bit of brain work, even though it was my second time doing it. But hey, I guess that's sewing. That's sewing for you. It's fresh every single time. <laughs> and yeah, maybe there is a little bit of weird, like, pulling around here. I don't know exactly what's going on. But I think, slash hope, that when I can give it a really good press, everything sort of settles in. Because nothing has really gotten pressed this whole journey, which is so against my whole ethos. But it turned out fine, and it's okay. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this journey and being here. I appreciate you so much. I appreciate you watching. As always, you have to let me know what you're working on this week. I'm always excited to hear about it, how it's going, what fabric are you using, what patterns are you using, what's the vibe, what's the vision. Let me in. I'm stoked about it. That's all from me today. Thank you for watching. I hope this was enjoyable or fun or something that you can watch when you eat your breakfast. I'm sending lots and lots of love and I will see you in the next video. As always, bye. you go also I never introduce myself I'm Carly I like to sew if you like this video maybe you should consider subscribing I'd love that it would mean the world and we can be friends and if you didn't like this video what are you doing here it's the end of the video <laughs> okay get out of here